Hello everyone, welcome. I am Linda Israel and thank you so very much for coming to my live stream here on YouTube. I greatly appreciate your support and for taking the time to come here and hang out. There are a few things that I want to go over before the actual live started, so this is a recording. First of all, I want to make sure that you like this video and subscribe, so give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. When you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell up in the corner. That way you'll get a notification whenever I upload a video, I have a, a broadcast post or even a live stream. If you're watching this video as a replay and you're on a computer, look for the little gear at the bottom. You can change the speed to speed it up. Or if you're on a mobile device, look for the little three dots and usually you can change the playback speed there. My live streams generally last about two hours. They can go as long as three hours. It kind of depends on what we're working on that day and how the feedback is in the chat. While you're watching, you earn junk bucks. So if you are here in order to get those junk bucks accumulating go ahead and type hello in the chat and my little bot junkie joe will see you and then you'll start accruing junk bucks and you're wondering well what do i do with those junk bucks well you can accumulate those and once you have two thousand of them you can type exclamation point award and you can redeem them for a ten dollar off coupon to my shop you can earn junk bucks while you're here and when you are chatting, as well as when you play the in-chat game. So look for those as they come up and if you make a donation. For those of you that make a donation during my live stream, make sure that you go over to my website at lindaisrael.com. And if you haven't already done so, create a user account. When you make a donation during my live stream, basically you're buying a membership to my website and to the live stream. In my opinion, what we're doing is you're accumulating that money in my account. Thank you for that donation. And as a reward, you will get 5% off your orders at lindaisrael.com. And during the live stream, if I have a journal that I'm giving away at the very end, you are eligible to win that journal. Anybody that makes a donation gets into that drawing by manually uh, typing in the raffle at the end, but then you also get the discount membership on my website. Thank you to Robin, who is my administrator during the live stream. She helps me out with answering questions as well as giving information. She is also my administrator over at the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. If you haven't joined that group, please do. We'd love to have you over there. You're welcome to share what you're working on. Speaking of sharing, during the live today, you can speak up in the chat and say, hey, I have a YouTube channel. You will not be able to share your link to your channel, but you can at least say, hey, my name is and this is what I do. And then your friends that come into the chat can follow each other. Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly and helpful. If you will be kind to those that are here, if you have a question, put it in all caps and I'll do my best to answer those. The chat sometimes goes pretty fast, so I don't don't always see it so do ask again and at the same time if you're in the chat and you know the answer to somebody's question please speak up and give them the answer check the description box for links to products that I share today yes I am an Amazon affiliate which means I do get a commission on items that you purchase through my link if you're gonna buy something anyway I greatly appreciate it it does not cost you any extra it just gives me a little bit of a commission which helps me buy products to show you here if you win one of the raffles you can start right now now by typing exclamation point raffle do make sure that you go over to my website and if you haven't already created a user account that way I will have your contact information so I can send you your prize I am starting a raffle right now that is for 200 junk bucks so you can get well on your way to accumulating your junk bucks let's have some fun today and let's get started thanks everybody for being here
Hello everybody! Welcome! I hope you're doing well today. Hello, hello, hello! I just remembered I was going to show y'all something. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want. How is everybody? I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great week. That uh, you did something fabulous over the past week. I've been staying busy myself, let me tell you. <laughs> it just seems like if it in one thing, it's another. And I am ready to begin creating with you today. So last week, one of my followers, Jennifer, reminded me that I have a peacock journal that I want to make for myself. And so I've been kind of playing around with some things and kind of came up with a concept. So if you have been following me for any time at all, you know that I have made what I call embellishment junk books or embellishment books which were basically books that are journals that had the ability to hold ephemera so you could use it somewhere else. Well, I thought I would do a combination journal today and in the next couple of weeks probably where I have embellishments and journals and little bits and pieces in part of the journal and then there'll be a separate removable journal where you can write most of your thoughts and whatnot so yeah so thanks jennifer hello okay i i boiled some water earlier julie and made some iced tea so i thought i'd kind of show you what i want to do today um my idea is that i would design each element as a separate page in that one section so when you flip your page over i consider that single page as one page um, and normally you see two when you open up your book so here is the first one that i've already made i'll go over it with you all so you kind of get an idea of what it is so i took a piece of some text weight paper that I had and I glued it to some book pages to make it sturdy and I made it to where it has gussets in the back to be a top loading pocket. In that pocket I already had a ready-made journal. This is from my Royal Peacock creative subscription box. I have one kit left in my shop. So if you're liking some of those elements that I'm going to share then you might want this kit. Then what I did was I had a bunch of this purple paper. Let me get one. Where is it? Seriously? I just had them. Okay, one moment. I got to step over here and get one. <clears throat> so if you've received any of my subscription boxes in the past, you've probably received this, I don't know what you call this, alligator paper. It's kind of shiny on one side. It has a texture to it. And I was trying to figure out a different way to use it. It came exactly this size. And so what I did was I attached another piece of paper that I rubber stamped on and used gold embossing powder. And then I flipped this over. So instead of having the shiny side up, I flipped it over and put it down. On this row, let me get these out of the way. This row, I rubbed my embossing ink pad and then did some glitter embossing powder. And I didn't care that it wasn't perfect. And then um, Safina, who does a... Uh, sorry silk fabric pack she sent me one of these and so these were some of the embellishments in there this was these three and this three was one strip and then this was a separate piece so I just glued that on there and I made three pockets and in each pocket I'll pull them all out I made a little journal card so what I did was I have these little tear-off notepads that have images on them like this is this one okay I trimmed it and then I glued down the one side and here I did the rose in a rose in gold embossing powder and layered it all up there and then I took a couple of sheets of paper that I had some of them are tattered angels sprayed I have a coffee dyed and then this is a tattered angels dyed and made just little journals to fit in the pockets. So each one, there's another one. Again, this is another one of these tear-off 
notepads. Here's a bigger one. So if you ever had these and you're wanting to do something different, cut it down, make it smaller. And then this one will go, and the insides are the same. I was able to take one of each sheet and cut it into three pieces so that it would fit. You can hardly see it. Wait, why aren't you going in there? Cooperate. Gotta hold your mouth just right. I didn't have this problem before. Why? Oh, there it is. It was sticking. Okay, so you probably can't really see it, but right around the edge and in between, which is difficult to see when this is here, but I know it's there. See it? I did some gold embossing so that the edges would be finished. And then I made little journal cards. This is some scraps of fabric that I've had. And then this is some tool that I've had for a really long time. And I thought I'd put that in here. I made little tags out of some scraps of blue paper. I'm still using up a lot of my scraps that I have in my stash. Then I've got another one of these that'll go there. And this one will go here. And then I made a third one. I'm just gonna stick it inside this little pocket. And then this is going to go in the pocket. And then this whole unit is going on a page on the embellishment side of my journal. So let me get started and show you how I'm going to put this together. Get all my little notepads. So before the stream, I had some junk mail and some book pages. So in between, you can't see it was some junk mail. In fact, it was about my retirement. And when I left the company that I worked for, I was fully vested. So whenever I'm ready after the age of 55, I can contact them and then I can get set up on getting my pension. So I put paper from a book page on both sides. I've made this be nine inches tall and it's going to end up being I think 12 and a half inches wide but I'm going to make it where it's six inches and six inches with a little bit of a gusset okay I have here a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that I've cut down so I'm trying to get in the screen so this was a 12 by 12 I cut it to be nine inches by six inches and then I took this piece that was left over and it's going to go in the middle so my thoughts were to completely cover this and this is going to make it thicker it's not quite as thick as cardstock but it's pretty thick if you like using cardstock be my guest I was trying to use up some of the things that I already had in my stash instead of going straight for cardstock all right, let's glue this down. I'm just going to use my Aline's Tacky Glue. And I'm going to use these pieces as a guide to get this placed in the center. And honestly, I don't have to have the full width of this, but I don't need any more scraps. So I'm just going to use the whole thing and put that down. I'm using Aline's Tacky Glue. How is everybody? I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> Hello, welcome for being here. Oh, I'll check, I'll check. I don't know, uh, are you talking about email or mail mail? I'll have to check. Thank you so much for being here. You did the laundry yesterday because it's overcast because you like to put your laundry outside. All right, let me get my bone folder. I'm just going to smooth this out. All right, and then I'm not even good at put distress inks on the edges. I could, I guess I will on this edge anyway. I don't want to put a lot on there because I may want to stamp and use gold embossing powder. And I don't want it to stick to the distressing, which it will, if it's pretty fresh when you go to work on your embossing and stamping. All right, let's glue this down. So I'm going to put this one over here. I'll glue this one down. My thought was I would do these pages that would have thick pockets, lots of layers of pockets, and they're not normally something that you might want to put in your journal a whole bunch of because they're so thick, but by doing it the way that I'm going to do it, 
hopefully it will allow me to have the writing space of the journal and then have some fun embellishments and little journals and journal cards available as well. All right, so I'm just going to smooth this out. So in theory, this piece should fit right on top of that portion of the page. See a little bit of a border all the way around. But I think I'm going to go ahead and place the paper on the other side. I haven't cut it yet. So I was thinking of doing this polka dot. Because I didn't, I have this other paper, but I don't want to cover it up. Because I want to save it. Because I only have a few sheets of it. I found it in my scrapbook stash of paper. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. So let's cut this one down. So again, I need it to be, for my use, nine inches. I'm just kind of measuring that out nine inches and then this is going to be cut into two pieces that are six inches set that aside and then I'm going to cut this piece into nine inches wide or tall or long I'll save that piece for another day all right so let's add a little bit of distress inks to the inside here. Okay, this one. Okay, don't need that anymore. All right, let's glue this piece down. So again, I'm just kind of using this as my gauge so that I put it in the right spot when I glue it down. So if you don't have cardstock, if you don't have a lot of pretty papers, but you have quite a bit of junk mail and scrapbook papers and book pages, then you can make your paper thicker just by layering them together. Okay, smooth that out. All right, and then we'll glue this piece down. You like the feather? It's kind of cool, and it's, it's fun. I like that paper. I didn't have but a few sheets of it, so I wanted to see if, what would be the best way to use it. Okay, so let's put that down. Apparently, I got some glue on here. Where's my little rag? Okay. Okay, this is coming out nice and thick now, nice and sturdy. Because it's going to have five layers of text weight paper. We've got the junk mail or the insurance, not insurance, the, the pension information. And then I had the book pages and then I'm covering it with scrapbook paper to make it extra sturdy. So there are my two sides. I will need to score down here in the middle, but I thought I would just show. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Right there on the middle. And there'll be there's this is going to be the space so that there's plenty of space and it was it's not too um, gator mouth in a sense. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to put this in my cutter and use my scoring tool. So I'm going to get my scoring tool. And I'm going to line this up right here and score. And then slide this over within there. And score. 
Oh, I ripped it. I was pressing too hard. And it's what happens when your paper is still wet. So I may have to... Uh, oh, my nose all of a sudden just started running. Ah, pardon me. Get a paper towel. Ah, pardon me. <laughs> all right, let's get some hand sanitizer. I'll cheat. I'll use my... What is this? Mermaid Lagoon, and let's find my Mermaid Lagoon in here. There, now you don't notice it as much. <laughs> you can always cover it up. You can always collage over the top of it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is still a little damp, but I think if I get my metal ruler here, and I'm going to lay it here and fold this over. I may need to wait just a little bit longer. It's still rather damp. So here's what I'm going to do instead of folding it right now. I'm going to wait. We're going to go ahead and stamp on this side because I want it to have a little bit more pattern. I'm just trying to decide if I also want to do... Um... Now I'm just going to do this stamping. All right. So I've got my Versamark ink pad. This is my technical um, tool, the spoon. <laughs> now this is gonna be my journal, Julie. This is gonna be my journal for me. I am gonna make journal inserts to go in it, um, which I may, end up giving away or selling a couple of the journal inserts but this base journal that I'm making right now is mine and I think I want yeah I'm going to use the the henna rose all right so here's what I do I'm going to stamp this along the edge and Let's go ahead and do this side too while I'm at it. Okay, so now I'm going to get my embossing powder and go over the area. Okay. All right, so it's really thick sounding, like bookboard thick. Okay, so now I'm just going to use my heat tool and emboss this. So let's start on this side. <clears throat> I hope I'm going to like this idea. I don't know. I, I find that when I'm writing in journals, which I've really been bad and not done a lot of lately, uh, that I don't like it to be super bumpy and... My thought was if I had a journal insert that was predominantly flat pages and that if I wanted to add things to it after the fact, I could because I would have this whole front section and a back section, I guess, because I'm going to do two like this, that would hold all the ephemera and the little pieces that I might want to put in or around or use. Okay, so that's the gold embossing up the side. I have found a journal that I had used a few years ago. It was a dragonfly. Was it Dancing Dragonfly? I can't remember if I used Dancing Dragonfly or Dragonfly Delight. And I had made it as a planner. In fact, I had purchased a smaller planner and took it apart and inserted it in between the journal pages. Well, when I use that planner, I had a tendency just to use the planner pages. I didn't really use the journal pages that were in it. So my thoughts were, I'm going to deconstruct that journal, take it completely apart, and make a new planner out of the pages that I had in it. I'll share that with y'all later. Uh-oh, why are they circling over your house? <laughs> All right, so we're going to get this one. 
I haven't decided if I should go ahead and go down the center and across the top and the bottom. Because it's going to be comfort up a little bit. What did you do? Could be a police chase. That's true, Margie. It could be. You never know these days. But the key thing is we're in Oklahoma. So put your teeth in and put your bra on if you do go outside. <laughs> that's a, a joke that's been going around on Facebook. Because it's tornado season. So you better put your teeth in and put your bra on before you go outside after the storm goes by. <laughs> Especially if there's a newscaster. Oh dear. Uh oh, the sirens are on our side of town too. <laughs> uh, you like that, Margie? Put your teeth in and put your bra on before you go out. It, it's amazing to me that. You know, something happens in a community and they find the most, I don't know, pathetic looking, beraggled, be, be beraggled, uh, really messed up looking people. And they're like, how are you after this happened? And they have no teeth and <laughs> uh, they're special. <laughs> Very special. Of course, around here, whenever we get a storm, we go outside and watch the weather. We don't stay hidden in the house. <laughs> okay, I think I like the way that looks so far. It's coming up on me. Come on, don't be. Don't be doing that. Put some glue back in there. All right, so let's look at this. If I were to put this on the page, you're going to see the gold down the side. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the top, the bottom, and down the center as well. That way the whole thing is done. I am not going to be in a rush working on this journal. You know, in the past, I've been able to complete a whole journal in a... a live stream but I wanted to kind of enjoy the process and you know do some things that maybe I haven't done in a while or never done and kind of contemplate each section of whatever I'm working on uh, not stress about it okay what is it because all the yeah, the, yeah, the, the put-together intelligent people refuse to be <laughs> interviewed. <laughs> they weren't outside watching the storm. They stayed hidden. <laughs> hey, man, did not hello. I forgot to say hello to everybody, so I apologize. I didn't say hello to everyone. So welcome. So glad to have you here today. All right, let's go ahead and do this one. I think I missed the spot. I did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I missed the spot here. So I'm just going to kind of ink up the stamp and stamp right in the middle just so that that's filled all the way across. And then while I'm at it, let's do the center section. Okay, so let's go this way. It'll be an overlapping, but that's okay. All right, now let's put some more powder. There we go. All right, let's put this away. And we'll emboss this real fast. Put all the things away where they belong. Hey, Raven, welcome, welcome, welcome. Connie and Jennifer and Janice. 
thank you, thank you, thank you, Robin. I appreciate you. Commercial! All right. <laughs> oh, I don't know if Raven's here or not. I just saw Julie say that. <laughs> Julie can't always see what Raven has to say. I don't know why. Got the commercial. I was watching a live stream the other day from somebody else. It uh, has to do with cruising. And the commercial came out. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, maybe one of these days I'll pay for the premium YouTube. All right. We're just going around this and embossing it. And then once this is done, the paper should be dry enough that when I go to fold it, I'm going to score it again, I think. And then we should be able to fold it. Yeah, you can create your own scrapbook paper just by rubber stamping it. You know, yeah, Raven's not here. Um, you know, you can look at the supplies you have. And I know some of my earlier journals, I just used a few different rubber stamps and uh, paint and painted pages. I don't know why. Maybe it has to do with privacy settings since you are in Australia. Maybe her privacy settings are set that she doesn't allow people from other nations, countries here. Everybody wants a part, yeah. Oh, that's true, the ad block. Well, see, when I watch it on my television, I, I don't have the, I have the commercials. I don't have the ability to do ad block. YouTube is your cable TV, yeah. If, if that's what you use instead of actual cable TV, you're saving a lot of money that way. Yeah. All right, we're getting there. The, the bad thing about embossing is that it does take a while to do. Um, but I guess part of it is I like the look of it. It's worth the effort to take a little bit longer to do it. I really like this Ranger ink. Mine's the old style that's white. Now they're black because it's so quiet. You can hardly hear it. I, you probably can hardly even see it or hear it on the, uh, the camera because it's really quiet. All right, we're almost done with that side. We did the middle, and I got to do the bottom. Okay, I'm looking. It makes it so rich looking by putting the gold on there. I know you probably aren't getting the full effect of it, but I love the way it looks. And I'm okay that I got a little bit in the middle there because I'm going to be covering it up anyway. Okay, we're almost there. And then we can start moving on to building the items that are going to go on top. Oh, you bought a bunch of stamps and you got way more than you thought, Mandadon? I, I, years ago, I haven't done it in a long time, I bought a couple of lots of rubber stamps. One of them, a lady had a laundry basket and she put in some Stampin' Up! stamps and ink pads. She had some paper. I think there was some paint. There was some non-Stampin' Up! stamps. Um, I don't know. The basket was full and she had asked for like $50 and it was well worth it because even the Stampin' Up! Pad, uh, stamp groupings or sets you know those are generally more than twenty dollars each and i think there was like four sets in there and then of course the ink pads and whatnot oh give this cat a treat <laughs> Done some 12 by 12 jump print mixed media embossed and whatever i could to think of to cut them up for potential journals yeah 
Yours are napping. Don't wake the kitty cats. It ended up being tw 25 pounds. That's a lot. Wow. That's a lot. Okay, let's score this again. Let's see if I've got it. Oh, wait. No, now it's going gonna, it's gonna to fold better because... But I'm going to do it again. I'm going to score it. Okay, where's my scoring tool? Score it on this side. I'm using the paper cutter to help me fold that up. You know, use the tools you have. Work smarter, not harder. Get that lined up in there. This one doesn't want to go, so I'm going to try putting my ruler on here again. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So there is the foundation. And in theory, then, this could be, I may need to add some glue in spots, but this would just be glued right onto the page. So when you get to it, you have all these goodies. I'm going to go ahead and fix a little bit of this. I probably should have put the other paper over the top of the six inch so it doesn't bend up. You know, you learn sometimes as you go. So maybe what I should have done was put that piece over the top and then those wouldn't have popped up. Like this here is kind of um, stick it out. But I'm kind of thinking maybe, now yeah, let's go ahead and distress it. Kind of helps cover it up a little bit. Hey, Valerie, welcome. Yay, you're very welcome. So glad you joined the group. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that you will share whatever you're working on in your junk journals. Take pictures, share it. Once a day, you can share your video links or if you are selling something. But make sure that you do interact in the group and leave comments on other posts there. Okay. Alright, so now that we understand, this is my base. This would be glued onto the front of it. Let's make some more of these portions and then I will glue them all on at one time. Okay, so this is going to go probably inside here. Set this over here out of the way. So I kind of grouped some things together I thought I wanted to use. Like I had, I have several bits of fussy cuts and I have some handmade embellishments that were given to me. This happens to be a um, paint chip. And then I had this piece of coffee dyed paper. So I think what I'll do right off the bat, let me see if this will fit here. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this down. And then we'll cut it out here in a little bit. It's kind of a, a glossy paper, so I'm going to go ahead and use my Fabri-Tac glue to glue it down. Sometimes using a leans on a coated paper, it doesn't always stick very well. But if you use with a lean stacky goo, but if you use like Fabri-Tac, it seems to work pretty good. All right, I'm just going to put it right here. This paper ripped, and I set it aside so that I could do something like this, which is back items so that they become a journal card. So I'm just going to let that set for a minute. And then I had a um, painted book page. 
my thought was I want a pocket to hold this journal card. So I want that on there. I think I'm missing. I am. Where is it? Aha. I knew I was missing something. Um, this was a peacock. Can you see the peacock here? And I had a little square of paper. So my thought was if I had this in purple and then the peacock feather on top and then this will be my big pocket. I haven't decided what to put in it yet, but I could layer this up on this paper. This is one of my gel prints that I scanned in to be a digital download. If And I didn't put a link. I'm sorry, I forgot. But if you go to my website and go to digital and then if you go by Either you can go by most popular or you can go by price, which is the lowest to highest. You'll see most of my digitals, especially some ones that I made for YouTube. For those of you that make a donation during my live stream. Ah, dang it. I keep forgetting to upload. <sighs> okay. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I get sidetracked. Sorry. Uh, I, I give away a lot of those to those that donate on my YouTube channel. So if you go there, you should see a whole bunch of my digital downloads and they're either zero or $2, a dollar 25. Some of them are $6 and 25 cents. Cause you get a whole bunch of digitals of my gel prints and pretty things like that. Okay. Oh, you got acetone now. Does that help? Good, good, good. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh, you got, did you send an email? I don't know if I got your email. I'll have to look. I don't have an email today, but if you've sent it, I'll check it out um, and see if I got it from you. Okay. Alrighty. So my thought was, this is a piece of um, painted book page, but it needs something else on it. Don't you agree? It kind of, it's kind of plain. And I did not play in this, so I'm going to try to find my stencils. Let's see. Um, what did I call them? August Stencil Club. I've rearranged some of my stencils. And I can't remember if I made this its own file folder. Okay, so this is L M N O P. That's not there. Well, I may have to abandon my thoughts. Because I thought I had a folder that said subscription box. Wild and free. I wonder if it's in here. No. These are some of my subscription boxes that I've had. You know, I kind of like that one. All right, let's try this. All right. Do I dare do some mixed media? Why not? All right, so I've got my paper. I've got a stencil. I see some acrylic paint. I believe I have a bin now that has my tools in it. I don't know. Did I put it? Up, up, up. Okay. Really? I've rearranged and now I can't find my little mixed media tools. All right, maybe we'll do this instead. Not in there. What did I 
do with it? I thought I was being smart and putting things where I could find them, but apparently I stuck it somewhere that I don't know where it is. <sighs> One. Okay. Okay, thank you, Robin. I can do a search to see if I can find her email. All right, let's do this. So I put a little bit of water into a palette over here just so I can clean out my little brush later. And normally I get like a little palette. So let's see if I have one. Well, things have been moved around, my friend. Oh, there it is. I knew I had some. All right, let's see how much of this gold paint I have. If I have enough. Okay. So I got a little bit of gold paint. I'm laying my stencil over this painted page. And I'm going to dip it into the paint here. And pounce it onto my page. So if you don't have a gel press, but you can get some of these foam daubers, you can also use the distressing tool from Tim Holtz. Uh, Ranger ink. I just save the pad and I do wash them out and reuse them. I think this will be pretty. Give us a nice little pattern on this painted paper. And again, you don't have to have fancy scrapbook paper. So if you don't want to worry about having the supply of scrapbook paper in your stash, maybe you have a limited space, then you can by all means make your paper as needed. You know, you don't have to make them way in advance. You can make them as you need them. All right. I don't want to get out more paint. So I'm trying to smear a little bit of this paint. I think it's probably good enough. I think it is. Okay. So I'm going to put this in my dirty and I'm going to get, I'm just trying to clean up some of the paint off of there. And I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to take a rag. Where is it? And I'm going to spray it. I don't, I'm not prepared to do my mass mixed media, but I don't want this paint to build up too much on my stencil. So I just have um, old rags, kitchen towels mostly. I think this is called a rowdy rag. Oh, this is when we had a um, indoor arena football for a little while here in Oklahoma and they were called the Wranglers and we used to go to the ball games or football games indoor football games and they would give us stuff like this rowdy towel okay that's good I'm just trying to clean it off a little bit so there's not so much paint um, this was from when I did the daydreaming kit a while back all right let's get rid of this over here. Let's see if this is dry, which I doubt that it is completely. So I'm going to hit it with my heat tool and cleaning out my little dauber. Okay. Isn't that kind of cool? And it has that distressed old look because I'd taken either a brayer and brayered the page, I think. Doesn't look like I used a gift card. I used a brayer. Okay, so that comes back up here. I made that because I want it to cover this. And basically, I just took a book page and folded it in half. And then I measured how big I wanted it to be. So in this case, it measures before I folded it up. It was four and a half inches 
by seven and three quarters. So I did a half an inch on each side. So now that makes it three and a half inches. And I did a half an inch on the top and the bottom. And so that makes it six and three quarters of an inch. Okay. You like that? Thank you. So I think what I want to do. All right. So I think. I think I can get away with just gluing on this corner here. So I'm just going to take this prototype piece and glue it straight on there because I know it's the size I want it to be. It'll also make it thicker. This is two book pages. So with that, that's a thicker book page that I'm going to be gluing down on top of it. So this would be nice and sturdy. So if you're looking for almost that cardstock thickness because that's what you like, this is one way to get it without using cardstock. Especially if you gutted a book because you used the spine and the cover to make a new journal. But now you have all of these book pages. Well, you can glue them together and turn them into pockets. And even journal cards. You know, you can put multiples together to make them really thick and then cover the front side with your decoration and the back side with some coffee dyed paper. And you'll be able to right on it because it's nice and sturdy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess. Okay. So I have, I have two little scrappies left, but I'll just put them in my bin. I may use them somewhere else. All right, I'm gonna let that dry before I try to fold it up, but that's gonna go in there. And I was thinking that I would want this to be another pocket on the front of this. I don't know, just because I could put another journal card in top of here. So let's go ahead and glue, or do I wanna add gold to it? Let's add some gold to the edge of this. and. Since I have the paint out here, I'm going to try to do it with the paint. Let's see if I can succeed at not making too big of a mess. I'm going to scoop that over. Because if you don't have embossing powder, you don't have an embossing tool, but you want this gold look, well, another way to do that would be with paint. So, I'm looking. All right. I'm just going to use this brush again, I think. I'm going to use my rag. <clears throat> from earlier. I'm just going to pounce out some of that water. Okay. I don't want to get paint all over me. Come on. Oh, you know what? Why didn't I just do it this way? Do it the smart way, Linda. This tube of paint is almost empty. I need to get some more. This one is called Antique Gold, and I know the price has gone up on it at Hobby Lobby. I'm not looking forward to that. You like the color combination a lot? Well, thank you. Okay. I'm just adding a little bit of paint and I'm not gonna make it perfectly straight. If you want it straight, you could use a ruler and a paintbrush. You could also use like a gold leafing pen. I have a few of those around here somewhere. All right, let's put that back over here. I'm gonna leave this out in case I wanna use it again. All right, I'm gonna try it. Dry, dry, dry. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a minute. Now I want this to be glued on top of here. I'm trying to decide that if I want it to be a tuck spot. So that means you would just glue down two sides of it. Or if I want to make this strictly a pocket that only fits here, I think we'll just do it as a tuck spot. And then that way we'll get this nice layered effect. If we put something in here that's a little bit bigger, but yet smaller than this piece. Does that make sense? Okay. 
I hope it does. <laughs> If not, I'm just in here talking to myself, and you guys can go back and watch this later to figure out what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you. You like this color combination? <clears throat> I think I saw it. Uh, where'd it go? Get. Okay, I kind of like that. And then this is going to go over that. I think that'll look good. All right. So now I don't have plans to put anything in it yet. And I don't know why I still have my gloves on so we can take them off now. Um, oh, and I didn't show you my nails. Can you see my nails? They're kind of a marbled effect. Jennifer, do you know that I never got peacock themed nail? plates <laughs> we never got back together again for me to make some peacock nails so we need to do that soon if you're into making some more nails all right so i got a book page and i did pretty much the same thing i decided how big i wanted it and then i made it fit my needs so i made it to be eight and a half by five and a half in case i wanted to put something bigger in it I'll have that ability and I have a piece of of my gel prints I think I'm just gonna glue it over the front of this and it will just become a pocket so I'm gonna close this up no I'm gonna leave the top like close the top and the bottom and leave the sides open that way I can line this up with the edge and I can go all the way to that edge because this is eight and a half inches. And then that way it'll give me a little bit more sturdiness on the sides. Okay. I have a plan. Add some glue to the page. Add some glue to the page. Here we go. Adding some glue. And it may look like I'm using a lot, but I'm really not. If you're in a really humid area, liquid glue can be hit or miss. It has a tendency to warp papers. I know that several people like the art glitter glue. Um, there was the, uh, what was it? The best choice ever glue. So it just kind of depends on your budget, where you live how much of a importance the glue plays. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna cut off this excess here. There. Okay, I got a little scrap left over. Put that over there. Yes, Pace. Yes, Pace. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Yep. Oh, there you go. If you can cut it down while you're crafting, you can use it. <laughs> okay, good. Well, then I'll, I'll message you. You can message me if I don't get to you. And let's see if we can do something. Hey, Leah. Hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. I'm going to let this dry because it's still pretty damp feeling to me. And I think this one, I'm going to dry it a little bit with my heat tool. Uh, some people like to use um, the double-sided tape. To me, it's so expensive. Um, and I have here even just recently used hot glue. It's just, it gets so freaking hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to burn myself and I feel like you do have to have another glue when you use hot glue just in case if especially if it's going to be something that could get hot because they have a tendency to pop free all right so I'm just going to fold in where it was already 
pretty much scored from before and it seems to be going quite easily. You know, we haven't done any sewing today, so let's get out the sewing lamb. And thank you, Giovanna, for the little lamb. I greatly appreciate it. And I think what I want to do is I want to add some distressing so I can really see where my edges are. And then we're going to stitch around it. You know, I also should look for some fabric and maybe we'll stitch around this piece too. All right, so I'm gonna fold it in. And since this is gonna be a top loaded anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this edge down so that it gets sewn all the way through the layers. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this end. Okay, and then we'll do this edge. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna lay that all out flat. Okay, I can see where my lines are. They may not be super dark. I could spend more time. And I'm gonna stitch all the way around inside there. I'm gonna stitch all the way around inside here. You know what? Let's do this one too while we're at it. So I'm just going to score this just so I can mark where the edge is. That way when I sew, I'll sew inside here. Now, do I want to go ahead and make this a top loading or a side loading? You know, if I don't glue any of those pieces down yet, I just stitch on the inside. I can choose before I glue it down which way I want to set it up as. And I think I'm going to go with a side loading. All right, let's go over to the sewing machine. Hopefully it's not out of whack. Are we all in the picture? Come on, computer. Wake up. There we go. Okay. Are we in? I'm, I'm still desperately waiting. I've got to wait a little bit longer before I can spend money in my room. But I picked out on Amazon a cart that's supposed to be for holding a computer. But I think it'll be perfect, like a laptop. It'll be perfect for my sewing because the desktop will be a little bit taller on the sewing machine, which makes it better. And when I don't want to have the sewing machine out, it has a shelf in the table so I could put the sewing machine underneath. And then I would have this flat surface over here when I need it. And it because it's got a shelf underneath, the machine would be up here. That shelf would be empty. So I could set things over here out of the way. So I'm, I'm, working on it. I've almost got enough money. I've got it in my wish list and I'm hoping to get that done in the next month or so. All right, so I'm going to set it up as a zigzag stitch with black thread in the upper and the lower. I do recommend that you wait for the glue to dry before you start stitching because it can gum up your machine. It also can rip the paper. Um, I just use a regular sewing needle and I have regular thread. Uh, some of the thread I've had for a long time. If you have really old thread, just be forewarned that a lot of that older thread will start breaking. It's brittle, especially if it wasn't stored out of sunlight. Um, but most of mine has been in boxes covered. And so it seems like they are working just fine so far. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm just going to start at the corner and stitch across. When I get to the other side here, I will stop the machine with the needle down, raise my presser foot, and swing my paper around, and then I can have a pretty nice corner on my stitching. Now, another thing you could do if you like the look of the threads sticking out at the corner, 
I might, the sewing machine has the ability to cut the thread. So say you like that looks, so we're just going to cut the thread. And then when I pull this away, I'll have a new thread that'll start when I start sewing on top. So it kind of depends on the look that you like. Um, some people don't want to see the threads at all, so they will do the continuous sewing as I am sharing. And they also make sure that their beginning and ends are uh, the length that they have approve of to poke it thrown to the back or they glue it down. I'm not that way. I just um, I just sew it. Whatever looks good. I was looking at one of my older videos and I used to do a lot of straight stitch and um, zigzag stitch. I guess apparently I couldn't sew straight there, but that's okay. <laughs> Alright, so this is the top. I'm going to stitch across here. This is nice and thick feeling too. All right, and we're gonna go down the side. Try to follow the line. Don't get so zigzaggy. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have been talking so much. All right, we'll go around this way. Here we go, here we go. got one more piece that we're going to stitch around and then I think we'll start to kind of build this and see what we need. I think I need a, a large journal card. Oh I didn't get some fabric for this piece. Uh oh. Where's my... Oh there it is. All right, I'm going to stitch this piece and then I'm going to grab a piece of fabric real fast. It's going to be a surprise to y'all because I'll just bring it over here to the machine. Okay. I need to get a few more peacock images printed. So I'm going to be working on this next week. I don't know where this one came from. <laughs> I just saw it and had to use it. Okay, so a piece of fabric. Piece of fabric. Let's get, I don't want to get it out of that. <clears throat> I have this basket. All right, we're going to come back over here. Main. Come on, computer. All right, so I have this basket that is full of fabrics, and I'm going to find my pair of scissors that apparently disappeared. That is the weirdest thing ever. Oh, there they are. Okay. Whew. And I think I want to cut a little piece of fabric to go on my tags here. I might as well cut this one out. We'll go back to the sewing machine. You're going to get two sewing sessions in one. <laughs> okay, so I got that cut off. So I'll set that back in my bin. And before I pick a piece of fabric, I'm going to go ahead and distress this. And I just realized there's no holes in either of the tags. So I will get my hole punch. I think I'll use my slot ID punch and punch a hole at the top here. Okay. Not enough space for two desks though. <laughs> you don't have enough space. Any open flat surface in your craft room does not stay that way long. And that's why I was thinking if on the shelf portion, if I really truly dedicate, the only thing that goes on there is my sewing machine. And then 
when it's not occupied and only during like a live stream or something, not a permanent storage solution, but it would be another place that I could stick things because I don't really have open flat surface around me that I would think is adequate. So I've been trying different techniques. I have, for example, this is a little bitty card table that's actually broken and it's put together with duct tape because I'm creative. And I put a box on top of it and I'm trying to kind of have some pieces to work out of in order to make my pages. So as you can see, I had to get up to get this fabric because I don't have quite enough room, you know. <laughs> okay, so let's punch a hole into the tags. Two and one. All right, I poached that. And I'm going to do this one. There we go. So that one's done. And then I'll just pick up a piece of fabric. Oh, you know, I also have, I have this gold stuff. It's like, I don't know. It's just fancy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a couple of pieces here. Let's do it like that. Okay, so now I've got two little pieces here. So I'll use those. Oh, I'm not really in camera shot very well. And then I see. That could be in one. So if we did um, put that on top of there. And... I think I like it for this one. So I'm just trying to poke this through the hole here. Oh, I think that'll be pretty because I can, when I stitch it across here, I'm just going to let these fall wherever they do. And so that just kind of gives a nice little fluffy element there. Fluffy! We gotta have fluffy! I like, let's see, I've got this piece. I think that'll be good for the other one because it's a little bit narrower and it's not the exact same color, but it's in the same color family. So I'll take this piece. Y'all are think I'm crazy that I saved all these pieces, but I made a quilt using these colors and I had all these pieces left over and I was like, I can't, I can't throw it away. <laughs> Just can't. And I'm using them. All right. I think I got that backwards. So I need to flip it. There we go. Technical sounds there that you were hearing. <laughs> okay. I like this tool. It's kind of fun. It's, I, uh, years ago, was a member of the Oklahoma Orchid Society here in Oklahoma. This over here. Let's go back to the sewing machine. And as being a, a member of the organization, they had a show once a year. And our, the year that I happened to be involved they had a orchid class where you could decorate in a uh, vase or you could make a corsage or you had to make a uh, uh, home decor look type of a thing. So I made some stuff just out of a spur moment and I took this tool and used it. And I also had some blue ribbon that I used as well. And I didn't even know I was going to be doing this class until the day of the event. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I just grabbed a bunch of stuff. Well, I was going on vacation and leaving town right 
during the event. So they packed up everything and they gave back all the tool and the ribbon, all the things that would be tangible items they gave back to me. I thought that was pretty nice of them. So I ended up using them. All right, so how's that? We got two little tags that we've made. All right, so we've got this pocket element. So I'm gonna fold this in. Oh, I need to cut off the corner. So I'm just go ahead and cut these. Okay. All right, I'll get rid of that. And I'll fold these back in. I'll crease them really well. Okay. All right, so now I'm just gonna lay this out and I've got my other pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim those corners as well. Okay, get rid of my trash. Go away now. Okay. Piles everywhere. Yeah, no extra space. <laughs> oh, thanks, Julie. Okay. Now, do I need any more distress ink on this piece? I think it'll look pretty good. So my thought was I would glue it here and then I will glue this guy over the top of it and this would become a tuck spot here and then there's a pocket here and then this can be a pocket as well okay so let's glue this together i think since this is painted paper acrylic paint sometimes the tacky glue doesn't work as well so i'm going to use or not the yeah tacky glue so i'm going to use the fabri tac on here to glue this together And then let's make something to go in the pocket. That, that way we can determine which way we're going to need this pocket to function so that we can get the item out of it, right? You are frozen. I'm moving. All right, so I'm gonna put this kind of in the corner. And I'm going to get, I got a little box here. I'm just going to set a little box on there for a second. All right. And then this piece, I'm going to put glue here and here so that this can be a tuck spot. Best to refresh. All right. So I'm just put a little glue here and here. Okay. Now I'll put this guy right about here. I like it. I think we need a sentiment. And then of course, when we start putting the things in the pocket, it will change the way that looks. So let's go ahead and I got out this little fussy cut. My thought was to put it closer down to the bottom and maybe I could stamp something uh, or get out some of my little word phrases and maybe a scrap of paper. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. Um, don't forget to fly. Peacocks do fly. Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get off the ground. <laughs> Fly free. All right, let's see. Do I want a little piece of paper? You know, I have some of this little piece of purple, which would tie it back in. So do we want to do that? Do we want it to kind of match or do we want to go and use this somewhere else? I'm kind of liking the purple. So I'm going to do the purple. To make sure this is 
adhering. All right. So I'm going to glue this down and then cut it out. Cut it out. Okay. It looks very royal. Yeah. It looks all fancy. Doing well for a while. Jennifer, did the, did the world uh, end at your place? We're checking. We haven't heard from you in a while, little lady. <laughs> it's funny because unless it happens right in my backyard, I don't really know what's going on. Um, we did witness... I guess you could say we witnessed uh, one incident that was right across the street from us. The, the, the gossip of the town. I don't know who it was, but there was an older gentleman who took his car up over the curb and into the building. And they had, I think, six different emergency services vehicles at that location within 10 minutes there was um, a fire truck two police officers a fire rescue and then a ambulance that came later <laughs> no one was injured no one left in the ambulance i guess they checked him out and then he just went on his way i don't know but it was the wildest thing I'm trying to decide if I want to put something over the color. I don't want to put too much embellishment on here because it won't slide into the tuck spot very well. You know, it could pop out. So I'm thinking maybe I'll come up just a little bit. Did I distress that? I got distracted. Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, wow, what the heck? <laughs> <coughs> so we, we had front row tickets, you know, in our window. We could see right across the street. <laughs> we saw the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I have to go perfectly straight, yeah. Um, I don't know. It, that was the big gossip. For the next few days, people are like, what happened across the street? And we're like, well, this little old guy just went up over the curb. And went, I guess he thought it was a drive through <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised because I, I don't get the Yukon paper, but I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't in the Yukon paper. You know, that's how noteworthy it is for my small town. <laughs> Oh. Okay, I'm kind of thinking I'll go ahead and leave the opening there unless I find something flat that I can stick in there. Or, um, I don't know, a flower. Or, but I don't, like I said, I don't want to stick anything on there that's going to come off. Okay. I should have got my little um, bottle. Because the tip is a lot smaller. I don't need this much glue. Alright, so I'm just going to put it down. I'm just patting it into place for a second. And then I'm going to lay a napkin over it. There. Clean up any glue that seeped out. I think that looks pretty good, doesn't it? We could stamp something on the back. I happened to find my Beeline Designs feather. So let's stamp that. Let's stamp it um, coming. Let's stamp it in this corner. Yeah, I like that. How's that? Just rather simple. All right, so this guy is going to go here. 
And then this guy is going to go here. Now I could put something behind there and I think I have something. I kind of, I went through my stash and I was trying to find things that I thought I would enjoy with this journal. So this is some of that pile. And then I've got another little pile that I'm working out of as well, but I, I kind of wanted to limit what I brought out each time. So I would pick something from this little grouping because I have a tendency to bring everything out. So here's where we are. I made these journal cards. So do we like the gold and the purple or the teal? I guess it doesn't really matter that much which one I put in there. See how this one, let's audition this one. You kind of see the ivory there. Maybe that's what it needs. Yeah, because I've got the teal here. I don't want to do the teal there. I'm going to do the gold one. Okay, so that's going to go there. I'm liking how this is coming together. So here's what I did. Again, Using these tear-off notepads, I glued several of them because I had a bunch of this black cardstock in my stash, and I stamped the peacock feather with embossing powder that's kind of a multicolor, I don't know, it's something I, I don't know if I mixed it or if I bought it that way, or even if I bought it that way, and then I added to it, okay? So it's just kind of a teal, a little bit of a white, I don't think there's any sparkle in it, really. I don't know. So I made a few of those and then I found some other journal cards that I haven't really used in a while and I just kind of put them quickly together. So, but I think this will be a good grouping right there. But what can we put back here? What if we were to make a folio is what my thought was that would slide in there that we could put maybe some of these smaller bits in it, you know, because it'll have uh, spaces. Okay, so let me grab, you know, I've been wanting to use this and maybe that's what we make it out of. We'll make a folio. This is text white paper. So I'm going to grab I think I'm going to grab some scrapbook paper, cardstock. So let's grab some scrap cardstock. Okay, so I got a couple of pieces of cardstock. It is white on the back side and we're kind of doing the purple, teal, back and forth. So what if we did this on the outside and then this on the inside? And maybe even if we glue the whole thing, I have to trim it down to fit into my pocket. So this piece that I trim down can become pockets on the inside. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Okay. See, and now I've brought something else out. <laughs> ah, and then I end up with all this stuff around me and I can't move. All right. So I think, I think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to glue down these together. Because I want it thicker than just scrapbook text white paper, but I don't need it to be like book board thick. I just want it thick enough that when you put your stuff in it, it doesn't seem like a piece of single ply text white paper and it's just wimpy, you know. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. We can't have it. Okay, so I'm just lining that up as best I can. And I'll grab my bone folder. It keeps moving. I 
All right, I think what I want to do is it's going to be a side pocket, and I'm going to put a tab on here, whether it be fabric or paper, so that it can help you pull it out. So I need to make this shorter than my pocket. I know that my pocket is at least eight and a half inches tall because that's the way I made it. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut this down to be, let's go with eight and a quarter. So that should give us a little bit of clearance because I did make a gusset. And I may go ahead and go to eight inches because that way, if it gets fatter, it kind of can catch at the top and the bottom a little bit. So if we make it a little bit shorter, it won't have as much trouble getting in and out of our pocket. Okay, so now that I've done that, I am going to go ahead and cut it down to 10 and a half inches because I want it to still fit inside the pocket and not hang out of it so that it is covered. I could make it to where it does poke out just a slight amount, say like that amount. And it probably would not because, yeah, so this is, 12 inches I can make it exact and it won't stick out so I'm going to do that I'm going to cut it down to 11 inches and I'm almost thinking I want it to stick out just a smidge if I don't like it I can cut it down so I'm going to cut it at 11 and a quarter inches okay so we end up with a couple of pieces so now what I'm going to do is let's 11 and a quarter. So that would be five and mm, I don't know. Where is it? Let's see if I can do this instead. Okay. So a little over five and a half. Just kind of scoring it so it's easier to fold a little bit. Okay, and get it to fold. There we go. Okay, so there is the outside. Here is the inside. We can decorate this, okay? I'm going to open that up and I'm kind of thinking maybe do we want to cut this into a couple of smaller pieces. I'm kind of thinking maybe I cut this in half and it could come two pockets. We could even put a pocket on the back side or we could put a belly band but I don't want it to catch. All right, so I'm going to cut this down. Let's cut it at five inches. Okay. And then we'll cut this. It is about four inches, so I'm going to cut it at two inches. And so now we have one that can go here and one that can go there. And I think I'm going to do that again. And just use all four of these pieces. And in fact, I've got a piece I could probably use somewhere else. And we're going to cut this down to two inches. Okay, I kind of like this because then I can go here and say I want to put... Um, this in the pocket I can but I have a couple of smaller cards that I like so I can either position this where it stays down or put them in sideways how's that look I think I need to put some distressings and I, I'm kind of thinking 
maybe we should do the gold paint again. So instead of doing the distressing, use the gold paint to go around the edge. Let's do that. All right, so I'm going to get a scrap of paper here. Move a couple pieces out of the way. I'm going to put my gloves on because I can get messy. So very, very messy. Are you liking what I'm sharing with y'all today? I just thought, you know, I'm not going to stress about it. I'm trying to use up some of my supplies. I'm, you know, as I think of something else, ooh, let's put this on there type of idea. All right, so I'm cleaning off the brush. Move this over here out of the way. I kind of feel like maybe I should go around the outside edge of this too. So let's see if my paint is still wet enough. Okay. So I got a little scrap of paper here so that I can lay this down on it. My paintbrush was a little wet, but I think I'm okay with that because that kind of thinned out the paint a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to do these real fast. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do the cover. And I think I don't have to fill all the pockets this session because it would be good to have room to grow, right? You, you know, leaving some spaces open that maybe in the next couple of weeks I will be like, oh, I wish I had a spot to put this. And there it would be. Okay, that one got sloppy. <laughs> Linda, you're getting sloppy. Don't do that. All right, let's go across here. And I think we should do the inside, too, of this. Let's see if I can keep from smearing the paint. Okay. Oh, I got a little rambunctious there. Oh, here, I need to do the spine. Oh, yeah. With the spine, you think? All right, let's dry this a little bit. Oh, I kind of got the inside. Let's do it a little bit more. Your husband keeps re re remind bugging you. Yeah, it's going to be a long process. It's, it's not going to be a quick thing because I, I want to play with different things and um, just play without necessarily a complete goal than just to finish <laughs> with something that I think I will like and use. That's what I hope. Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm glad I put that in the water, but it made it uh, a little bit runnier, but that's okay. Tell that hubby, so leave me alone. I'm busy. You turn the sound up for him. So, hubby, she's busy right now. You leave her be. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I like this. I'm going to dry them a little bit just in case the I like it. So should we also stitch on those? Should we add stitches? You know, stitching is, is what I kind of do for me. Is 
because I just like the way it looks. And I think it would just give it one more layer um, of texture inside there. I don't know, it makes it a little bit more elegant. Maybe that's what it is. All right, so we added the paint. Oh no, where did he go? There he is. So now we're gonna add sewing, sewing lamb. I am, I'm gonna add sewing. I'm gonna stitch all the way around these pieces. And I'm also gonna stitch all the way around the outside edge. And I think also um, down the spine as well. So it'll just have that little block look to it. What do you think? All right, let's do that. <laughs> We're busy. Leave us alone. All right, let's stitch it. Let's stitch it. And again, I'm using up you know, all the pieces that I'm getting out. So I'm not creating more scraps. Not really. I think there's only a couple of little pieces I haven't used yet. But I'll find the place for them. Yeah, I like it. I'm sewing a little faster, but I, I like the way it looks. The texture that it gives. <laughs> okay, here we go. Stitching around, stitching around. Henry and I have been watching the silliest TV show. Um, it's called Supernatural, and it started back in 2005, and I think its last episode aired in 2020. So it was on air for 15 years. <laughs> and it's about these two brothers who hunt spirits and demons. <laughs> and they're pretty good at it. Sort of. <laughs> the acting could be a lot better. But I don't know. We're being entertained. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, is it going to be so-and-so? <laughs> We try to guess what's going to happen next. Currently, they're in three more weeks. And when uh, Dean's contract, because he made a deal with a demon, ends, he's going to have to die and go to hell. So they're trying to figure out how they get him out of that. The silliness of TV. I spent some time today. I kind of watched a couple of tutorials. Um, Natasha at Treasure Books, she made a, a cool um, envelope, but she called it a deconstructed envelope. And maybe that's something I should do is, is try her technique. She made the envelope so that all the flaps open completely. And instead of just sliding something into it, you have maybe an interior pocket that you put things in. Or you just have a real pretty writing space in the center that you can write in. And I thought those, she had some neat ideas. So I may try making an envelope that's all decorated out. Deconstructed is what she called it. <clears throat> Alright, let's go around this piece. What's cool about stitching two pieces of paper like this, the stitches are going to show on the other side too. So you're kind of giving a two for one. Oh, you know what I didn't do? And I'm going to stop and do that now. I want a tab to go on the side here. So let's go back over here and I'm going to glue one on, I think. Make something. Yeah, it's, it's supernatural. Yes, supernatural. Yes. <laughs> it's it's silly, but it's good. I don't know. You know, I have this fabric. 
ribbon that I haven't used. And what else do I have here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe a piece of teal. Oh, here's a piece. Okay, so what if this was some ribbon I got a long time ago? And it says, um, it says $9, but I know I paid maybe 50 cents for it. It's got a wire in it. But my thought was if I kind of kept it stretched and got a piece of this. So would that be a interesting pull tab? Because it's got gold in it. That's what I was thinking. It was just a little more upscale. Oh, and I also have some feathers. Okay, I think I know what I want to do. Okay, I think to start with... I'm going to make a couple of these. So I'm trying to get this ribbon flowed out straight in my little piece of fabric here. Alright, I'm going to put down, let's go this way, maybe it'll stay better. Okay, I've got, what did I do with it? Some Fabri-Tac glue, just to help kind of hold it together. So I'm going to put All right, let's see if I can make this stick together enough to kind of be one little piece. Okay. So now that's Kind of sticking together better now and I have some fabric scissors. I'm trying to decide if I want to cut off this. I don't know. Let's fold this over. I want to make it about that long. I think I'm going to cut it off. Okay. And then let's fold this over again. There. And I'll set this aside to use another time. And now what I'll do is I'm going to glue one down and then I'll glue the other one and then I'll stitch them. Alright, so I think I want it somewhat in the center. So I'm just going to put it in the center. And press that into place and then I'll take this piece and add a little bit of glue. Okay. And then what I do sometimes is I'll lay it right on top of the other if I'm trying to get them in the same spot and then they'll line up. I think that's going to look good. How's that looking? I think I like it. And it'll have this really cool texture and when we stitch over it, it'll be nice and sturdy. Give it a moment to kind of dry. Okay, I like that. Alright, let me get a drink. Let's stitch again. Let's stitch again. Like we did last summer. Oh. <laughs> My husband, son, and fiance. Oh, well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Christina. You're so very fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, let's, let's stitch down the sides and across the bottom. Um, I'm not worried about the paint because we're going to put this over it. 
we could splatter some paint on here too to kind of help cover up. Maybe we'll stamp it. I don't know. All right, let's stitch it. It's, it's mine. I can do whatever I want. I have some feathers. So I want to see if I can make a little something to glue the feathers on here as well. They're little kind of a turquoisey feather. I've got some large peacock feathers that were really old, they're brittle. And so I laminated a couple of them to see what I thought of that look. It didn't laminate smoothly, so I'm trying to figure out if I want to try to paint over it to kind of make it an antique look or if I want to um, just frame it out and not worry about it. I can also coat it with glitter. So, why did you not cut? There we go. Uh, coat it with glitter. I don't know. I'll show it to y'all and y'all can. Oh, I didn't. Sorry, I was, wasn't over at the <laughs> sewing lamb. I'll show it to y'all. What I do with them. Right here. Oh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. So here's the. So see, it kind of wrinkled the plastic, I guess, because of the thickness of the feathers. But these are really brittle. They were so brittle. And so I'm trying to decide, you know, what do I. What do I do with that? Because I can cut it down to fit. I can make a pocket out of it. Um, here's another one that I did. I don't know. I was kind of playing around with it. I, all of the peacock feathers I have like these are large. So I don't have any little bitty ones. I'm going to go back through that bundle again. Okay. So. Feathers. What did I do with those feathers? Feathers. And then, here we go. Part of the um, Royal Peacock kit are some fussy cuts. And then the elements were also printed on one of them on uh, two sided, double sided papers. And so you've got some of the elements that will have. Um, where is it? Here's one with the print on the other side. <clears throat> but I've got here, oh, we've got this. We've got a crown. And what if we did, come here. We've got maybe two feathers. Here's a little feather. Hmm. and lay that across there, only on the front. And then I was going to glue this uh, crown over the top of that. And I could also glue, I don't think there's enough glue in here to hold that in place. Um, a little piece of that gold tool again. What did I do with it? Here it is. <clears throat> We're just going all out here. I kind of like that idea. Yeah? All right, let's get some glue. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is glue down some feathers. So I'm just kind of... Trying to get it even. I've got this little feather. 
Okay. And then I just stuck my finger in it. There we go. <laughs> All right, so then this little piece, do we want it to go all the way around? Okay, put a little bit more glue. Oh, stay, stay down there. Behave. All right, let's put this right on top. So it's kind of poking out. Okay, just press that into place. Oh, look at me. Can I get in there? There we go. Oh, that is going to be pretty. That's going to be pretty. Okay. I'm getting into this, y'all. <laughs> I don't know what I want to put on the front there. I do have some fabric pieces um, that I made because I didn't have any peacock fabric. And so I made these. I have a digital subscription because of my t-shirt business. And these are supposed to be something that you would use to make into a t-shirt. This one's too big for that. I do have some that are just the feather. If I can get, come on now, Linda. All right, I've got just the feather. We could cut that apart. Let's kind of get them even. Now what I could do is if I cut this in a nice rectangle, I can just glue it on the front of there. If I was smart, I still can, I guess. I could stitch it all the way through, but it might be better to stitch it to another piece of paper and then glue it down and it becomes another pocket. <laughs> You like the feathers? Isn't that kind of cool? Would that be something? These are not cheap. I mean, they're not going to be, you know, a dollar or two. They're going to be probably five dollars. But my thought was these are four inch squares. Maybe I can do a little bundle. That I printed the images. I think I made like three sets because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And so these are all different patterns that I chose and I just love the color and vibrancy and it's so much better because I'm using up a scrap fabric that I've had for a while because these are transfers. You have to have a heat press in order to press them onto fabric. Um, and I heat pressed them and then I cut them out and I thought, well, this will be perfect to add at this size because a lot of times when you buy fabric, the pattern is much larger and it's not really geared towards junk journals where we want a little bit smaller scale if you're trying to match a theme. Um, but I'm using scraps. Why not do it this way? All right. I think I'm going to do this guy. So I need a piece of paper. And I've got a whole bunch of black cardstock, so I'm just going to get one. <laughs> All right. So this should be done. Isn't that pretty? So then if this is on here... I can even make it a gold frame. Yes, we're going to make it a gold frame, Linda. Okay. So let's cut this guy down. So I'm going to get out my ruler and my rotary cutter. And let's line this up here. So I think just kind of cut this straight across here with a little bit of a border. All right, just lining that up. Here we go. 
That's the glue, Linda. You can't cut anything with the glue. Oh, there's a divot in my craft mat. Okay, so there's that way. So if I go right about there, I think that's what I want. Let's cut this way. I know I'm creating scraps. That's okay. I get what I want. All right, let's go right there. Put my ruler down. All right, so I'm going to glue this to this cardstock after I paint the cardstock. Okay, put away. Put that away. All right, put the scraps in the scrap bin. My fabrics. All right, so my thought was I want this to go on here. I don't know. I guess I could, in theory, we could stamp the word journal, but it's not a journal. This is embellishments. You know what I can do? This is my design, so what I'm going to do is go around the edge in gold. I will glue this piece and stitch it. I'm going to leave that blank because I might make a label. To put on there. Because I can make a little, a little label of some kind. Because it's not necessarily a journal. All right, let's put some gold paint on there. Yes, I did all the sides. <laughs> I did all the sides. Trimmed it down to the size I wanted. Oh, I put my glove on wrong. Come on now. All right, let's set this over here because I don't want to get anything on it. And I don't want anything on that yet. So we're going to get the gold paint again, whatever's left of it. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush. And let's see if I can squeeze a little paint out. Yep, that's way more than I needed, but that's okay. Maybe I'll get out some more paper here. And just go around the edges. Okay. I kind of like the a little bit messier. Getting some true mixed media today, y'all. All right, so let's dry that. Another thing I could do is I could do some gold embossing stamped on here. Hmm. I don't know. You know what I'm going to try instead? I'm going to daub paint onto my stamp. Yeah. Now, do I want to do the... Let's do the feather. And we'll stamp this feather around. All right, here we go. Either it's going to work or it's not. So I'm just going to take the paint. I've, it's got a little bit of water in it. I'm going to pounce it onto my stamp. And I'm going to hope. I'm going to do it where the fabric would be anyway. Oh, that doesn't look bad. And I can get a couple of generations of stamping. Just lightly doing it. I think, in fact, I'm going to stamp it off. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, I like it. Okay, so I want to clean my stamp really fast. So I'm getting a rag. And I'm just going to use my Thieves Cleaner and spritz it real fast. It's wet, so the paint should come right off. And I'm just going to rub my towel and dry off all the cleaning fluid. Because you don't want it to set in cleaning fluid. Okay, so that'll be ready. I can use that again. All right, let's dry this. Let's dry it. Is that cool looking? You like that? All right, let's move that back. Let's go over here for a minute. I'm trying to decrease what's in our space here. It's over here for now. I think that paint is just about dry. I like it. All right, I'm going to take my gloves off. I think we're going to get this done. And I say that to this point today, anyway, you know, but I think I like this right in the center. And then that is going to go on here. You like it? Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to add some. glue to it you know and it, although I'm I'm using a lot of what I had you know yes I did print the uh, leaf or the leaf the uh, feather gosh you can't get my words out but I mean you can find stuff in all kinds of places go to the thrift stores and look for old bed sheets or you know a quilt top blanket type thing that was printed or some clothing cut it up but I already had this dark navy blackish it's almost black but it's a navy fabric and I thought well how can I use this because it's a weird texture and I was like it's a there's not a whole bunch of it so then I thought well I can print these on there all right I'm going to stitch around here and then I think I will make a gusset so that could be a full pocket and we'll do it as a um, because of this a top load pocket so I'm going to go ahead and put gussets on here so that'll give me the ability to get items in and out easier And I think I know what I want to put in here. I, I think I saw another tag here that would look good sticking out the top of that, wouldn't it? With that different color. Okay. Not those scissors. Where are my scissors? See, I, this happens to me all the time. I'm like, oh my word, where did all this stuff come from? How does it manage to multiply? <laughs> I don't understand. I think I'm only going to stitch around this portion. Not around the outside. Because I already have the gold paint on that outside edge. I don't need additional embellishment out there. I'm just going to make that even. There we go. OK. 
Okay. Now you could put a full piece of paper back here. Um, I just take my scraps and cut them into at least one inch strips for this purpose so that I have them. So I think I have one left over there. So the next time I get out some book pages and I'm making something and I've got scraps of it, I'll just cut some one inch wide strips. Okay, so we're going to stitch around this piece and then we will adhere it on the front of here. All right, let's do the sewing cam this time. I hit the button. Let's make sure it switches. There it goes. All right. Stitch around it. Okay. I'm kind of having fun doing this. And, you know, I'm, I started by making piles of things that I thought that's what I want to use. And bringing them out onto my desk and going through them a couple of times so you remember what you have right nearby. So that's kind of helped me today to be able to kind of come up with a couple of ideas that I think would work. So come on, are we back? All right. I think I want to put this in here and I need a piece of fabric coming out of the top of that. Um, I could use this piece again at the top and it would tie it all together. Or I could do something completely different. So I could put that across the top. Because we don't want it sticking out. Because this has got to go into a pocket. So we need to keep it low profile. But make it available to come out of the pocket. So I'm kind of thinking maybe that's what we'll do. Is just put a little piece of this on here. Okay this back over here. I'm just going to open it up because it's a wired ribbon that I glued to that fabric. It's kind of keeping its structure. Well, thank you, Julie. Thank you so very much. Okay, so I'm putting some glue in here and we'll go over to the sewing machine in a moment and stitch that on. And then I'll put the pockets all together. Okay. It's not straight, but that's okay. We could also add a feather to that. Oh, should I? I have this little disc here. All right, what did I do with the feathers? Did I put them more? Nope, oh, they're right here. I have a little feather. I don't know. Should we put feathers on that too? Y'all give me your thoughts because what I want to do is stitch that down and then I would layer a couple of feathers, but keeping it as flat as possible on top of there and then that's just a circle of the same paper that's on the back of this um i could maybe put a little rhinestone on it it'll have a little bit of bulk there shouldn't be too much okay should i go center yeah i think so all right so let's glue that down i like the way this looks y'all i don't know if y'all do but You know, and I like this scrapbook paper. I, I want more of it. <laughs> Maybe what I need to do is uh, use this beeline stamp and stamp my own version of this paper and colorize it. And then I can make my own little background paper. That may be what I do is stamp and color it. 
and then I can bring it into my computer and I can change it. So if I color it all one color, when you bring it into my software, I can adjust the hue a little bit and you can get multiple different shades of something out of it. Okay, I like that. Okay. I, that's what I'm trying to decide, the little circle, or I can do, um, you know what, instead of a circle, I have some butterflies. Oh, I have a dragonfly. How about that? Now, if I use feather, little circle, and the dragonfly. Hmm. I think it needs to be a darker circle. I think I swapped that out for this one. I may need more, uh, uh, you like the dragonfly? Okay. How about one more feather? Oh, here's another two of them that escaped. What happened? Oh, I guess when I put my hand down on top of the bag, it was when I put my hand down on it by accident, there were poof, <laughs> there's feathers everywhere. Okay. So I want to stitch this really fast. So I'm just going to grab my stitch sewing machine and stitch that down. Ah, my machine didn't want to stitch all the way. It's being cranky now. I thought that the glue was dry, but it may be because I was rushing it. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, great. Okay. I have to change my needle. I'm not going to worry about it. It's glue. It's, it's stitched enough. It's stitched enough. Okay. So I'm going to put a dollop of Fabri-Tac glue. Oh, and I think I need to get another piece of that gold, um, fuzzy fabric whatever tool the tool I need a little piece of that tool okay and then do I want to put it this way I'm just kind of making a messy blob I don't know I just because I just want the texture to kind of be there. All right, and then we'll put this on top. We'll add a little more glue. Okay, and I know I'm off center. I did that on purpose because I'm going to put the dragonfly across there. And I'm trying to hold it in place for a moment. Okay. I think I'm going to put a clip on it. Oh, come on now. There. I'm going to let that set for just a moment. And while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and glue the um, pockets on the inside here. And then I think we can wrap it up for the day once I get this all glued together. I know I want the bottom ones pretty close to the bottom, so I'll just go ahead and glue those. And then I'll audition how far up I want the second pocket above. Okay, I was trying to get serious, get my things done. All right, what do you think of today? Just making the whole pocket element um, concept of building up one page at a time and I don't know I kind of like this a little bit it's a little bit different um I could see where if I was in the mood to make a themed page just to get it out of my system that I could really go all out 
on that theme on that page and just put all kinds of stuff into it because I may never do that theme again type of an idea. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to toy around with different ways of putting my journals together that are fun and functional. I enjoy doing. Okay, I'm just kind of pressing that down, but I think I need to put a block on it because for some reason, oh, I know why. It's because there's, I've um, got multiple um, layers, and so it's it's really soaking up the glue. All right, so we will go over that. So we'll go over that because we got to stay within our line. And I think I want to gauge the top one. Can I go like that? Okay, so I want to make sure that I come down just a smidge. And we'll glue this one. We'll just glue them the same across. And I think this time I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac glue. All right, I've got a glue glob. Spider mesh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I don't know, it was, it was a gold um, tool that I got around Christmas time one year. And I've used it in a couple of little projects, but then I forgot about it. And I think I had used up the other, and this was the only thing I had left. All right, let's put that down here and here. And this should be dry, so I can kind of help it right there. Okay. All right. And then go down this one. I haven't decided what to put on top of the pockets. Or if I should just leave them, you know, the way that they are. But I, I kind of feel like I want to put something on top. Use a clip over here. All right, let's move that one up here. Let that dry for just a moment. Okay, so there's my dragonfly. And this feels a lot drier than it was. So we'll use some glue and put this together. Okay, I got quiet there. All right, we'll put that right here. And I like it. I'm just going to hold it for a moment. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So we've got the fabric that will tie into the side that we'll use. Okay. I don't think I want to put anything in the pockets right now, but I want to at least close it up. And this should fit in my pocket all the way in my pocket. Come on. There it goes. In my pocket. It does stick up a little bit, but my my pocket's eight and a half inches, so that should be fine. Because if you look here, go here and here, and we put it in, it's actually shorter. So that shouldn't be a problem for that to go in there. And it'll stick out that much with the feathers. How's that? And then you pull this out. And it's got a tag here. It's got that dragonfly just peeking out. And I think I may add a, a label. You know, I have, and I probably should have done it. Um, but maybe what I do is layer it. A 
if I layer this over another piece of paper, because that, that bronze kind of goes away, doesn't it? I guess I could paint them, I could paint it in gold and then put that down with a, another little black border around it maybe. Oh, you love the feathers? Okay, well, thank you. I've had them, and I've been needing to add them. And I was like, i got to get those out and do stuff with them. I'm going to leave that out. So maybe if I come up with a solution, how... Because I don't want it to interfere with the uh, pocket. You, know, you don't want your brad legs back there. But I think it would look good on there. And then this over here, I just layered up one of my Royal Peacock um, journal tags. And then I made this one out of a paint chip. And this is one I made a while back that's got several little pieces of paper on it. So you could write on here or on the back. And then this we finished today. It was a uh, painted paper that I stenciled. And then this was one of my old gel prints. And then I don't know where this came from. It was an image I've had. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to use it. All right. Well, everybody, let's uh, let's get in on the raffle. I think I think that's going to look good. If I paint that gold, I'm putting it down with gold brads, but I'll need to make a little frame to go behind it. All right, y'all, get in on the raffle for. 200 junk bucks. Did y'all like today's project? If you did, you know, hey, if you could, after we get off the live stream, or if you're watching us as a replay, uh, comment down below what you liked about today. Um, I great, greatly appreciate your feedback and you spending the time watching my live streams. It really uh, cheers me up. So I hope that you enjoy them as well. Uh, thank you so much for being here, everybody. All right, let's pick the winner of 200 junk bucks. And that winner is Sheila, congratulations. I'll get that added to your account. Uh, thank you all again for being here today. We're going to continue on next week. And so I'm just, I think, going to spend the time making these pages. I My goal is to make a total of eight of them. So I have two completed now. And I was really sure that I wasn't going to spend this much time on one page, but I think I'm fine with it and I'm not done with it. Um, I think I want to put something on the front here and I know I want to put the label after I paint it gold. I think I have a gold leaving pen that I can do that with uh, quite easily. Um, and then of course I need to fill the pockets and I don't know that I have to fill them completely, but I may want to do some and I was I was thinking about decorating the inside but I don't think I need to I think it's fine the way that it is okay all right well thank you Lee uh, thank you Ada thank you Julie thank you Robin thank you Sheila thank you Margie uh, thank you uh, Amanda I'm trying to think who else was here um, I greatly appreciate you. I hope you have an amazing week. Do something fun. Do something creative. Uh, get in that stash that you have and figure out how to make a little something. Make a, make a little folio like this out of some of your favorite things that you just love. It doesn't have to be super big. Um, make a little something like that and play around with different things. I don't know. Just have fun with it. Uh, do something kind for somebody else out there. You don't know who is going to need that smile, that kind gesture. It may just completely make their day. So do something fun and kind. Um, what else? I think that's about it. I'll see you next week when we go to next uh, week. Yeah, uh, the things I'll have to decorate it with. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Going through it all. All right, y'all take care. Lots of love to each and every one of you. 7 p.m. for dinner. I know it's 6, 6, uh, 15 almost now here. Y'all take care. Lots of love to you. Bye, everybody.